Good afternoon, everyone. Well, my name is Hubert Lim from Nesco of Cell Labs. Uh, today, we're going to gonna, uh, talk about an abuse methodology regarding the Google GCP Cloud Shell. So let's get started. Uh, today's agenda is like this. Uh, first, we're going to talk about what's a, have a quick glimpse of the what's a Cloud Shell. And once we have the Cloud Shell initiated, we have a quick map scan about what we found during our the discovery process. And finally, we'll talk about how we abuse the findings we found to the open pool we found, and what's the impact as well as the mitigation uh, that could be countermeasured in the future. So what is a cloud shell? Cloud shell is basically a web-based interface, a command line interface that can be used by the end users to manage their cloud resources or even develop their small apps to, to, to the command line interface from their web shell. And the cloud shell is also preloaded with a lot of utilities, especially those cloud-specific utilities from different uh, cloud shell providers, such as for, for Google, we have uh, gcloud or gsudo pre-installed. So you don't have to worry about those uh, tools installation. And also, uh, they also have uh, programming language pre-installed, so you can have your preferred programming language pre uh, ready to have some development of the test installed. And one of the best things is there are a few gigabytes of persistent disk drives in your home directory. So once you have some development or some stuff, you need to keep it there. You'll be persistent forever. For GCP, I think we have about five gigabytes of storage and maybe one gigabyte for AWS. So once we have the Cloud Shell instance initiated, uh, we have a quick scan against its egress public IP, as well as its private IP. And we found that there are two open ports public to, to the internet, the 22 and the 6,000. And the result is quite inconsistent compared to what we found against the private IP. From the IP, private IP, we found that the only consistency from public or private is the open SSH version 8.9. And that's the only consistency we found. And by observing the NAS states as well as the TCP dump from the same pack, same from our external a map scanner, we can have a flow diagram like like this with the uh, port 6000 exposed to the internet and it will map to our internal contain cultural containers port 982 which will further redirect to the port 22 that, that's listening by the SSH daemon. Before we move on, we, uh, well, let's take a look at another feature called the web preview. The web preview is another feature from the cloud shell, uh, which is actually an HTTPS layer of a front end that points to your HTTP backend. And without uh, the hassle of uh, applying SSL certificate from the developer, the developer can just focus on its own app development on, or running on the internal HTTP backend. And the other thing to be noticed is that the cloud, uh, the web preview is not public accessible. So 
if you share the link above that ends with closure.dev to someone else, they're not able to access this, and the Google Authenticate prompt will be displayed. Uh, basically, it's only accessible to the user that runs the cloud shell, or, or yourself. So by add, adding what we found to the web, web, web preview, the diagram now could look like this. On the left-hand side, the authenticated user can access the internal HTTP service only on the Cloud Shell container through the identity aware proxy or the IAP over the uh, uh, HTTPS channel. And let's take a look at how we can abuse it. Uh, from the diagram, something we can control is the blue area that that's in the container. So the, the traffic that comes in from external 6000 and then through port 99, we can further control the packet flow through the firewall rules to abuse this feature. So on the right-hand side is the diagram of the Linux net filter, and we can control how packet flow to internal service through the pre-routing chain in the NAT tables. So with one thing in mind that uh, in IP tables, the priority of the rules is the uh, first match wins. So we keep in this mind that we will insert different rules that have the most wider box first and then the narrowest one for, uh, in the last. So we could define three different cider blocks here with uh, the first one with the narrowest block and the last one matching all the IPv4 address spaces. So after we insert in these three rules, we could have a different uh, packet flow path like this. So after applying the firewall, uh, users uh, client connecting from different side blocks could have different service access but they all through the external 6,000 ports. And from the last, the, the, uh, the bottom line path here, we could find that by uh, going through this path, we could uh, bypass the IAP proxy, which uh, is some kind of abuse, the, the impact that can be abused. So by dumping the original official URL path that require Google authentication, we could now use the a, a different URL that's public accessible over 6,000. And if we have DNS managed we can also make this scheme an HTTPS as well. If we can apply for a TL certificate in the future. And also know that since the, the UR, the FQDN that ends with Google user content.com, it somehow gave us a uh, extra immunity over some uh, someone's security controls. Regarding the impacts and mitigations, the first impact is the web auth 
uh, web preview auth bypass we earlier mentioned. So by doing so, we can expose uh, or deliver stuff we want. For example, we could deliver malicious, uh, malicious stuff as well as uh, confidential stuff that's been accessible to the cloud sh share instance to further access your uh, organizational data to the public or to the cloud share instance. And the second one is by adding extra SH part key to the folder here, we can Again, control to the cloud shield to again to the port 6000 without the access of the web shell to the to the web, web user interface. And to the SUX server we created earlier, we can also pivot in the traffic to the cloud network, either to bypass certain restrictions or either create an interacts C2 channel to some kind of uh, C2 service. To further mitigate the, those findings, uh, the first thing is the MFA uh, hardening. From Google's uh, best practice, uh, time-based one-time password is uh, feasible. And from my previous rating exercises, uh, I confirmed that the TLTP is truly visible. So uh, the best practice will be using the hardware-based security key. And second is we could review our access control of the cloud shell to see if certain group of user is really need that access or not. And from the Google admin console, not the cloud console, we can define or control th this access. For example, we could uh, configure certain OUs like this one, and then further disable their access to the cloud shell. And the third one is the public ports we discovered. From my standpoint, it's pretty uh, uh, unusual to discover two open ports to, to the public. So from my understanding, uh, the culture on AWS or Azure don't have open ports discovered. So Google's been working on that. And last but not least is the principle of this privilege. So it's always a good practice to further review if the IAM rules is overly granted or not. And Google also provides several tools such as policy analyzer or the recommender. In recommender, it will analyze your permission usage in the past 90 days. And it will give you insights about if certain permissions hasn't been used in the past 90 days. So you can revoke it or even use a lower privileged IAM, IAM rule. This is the closure timeline that I've been disclosed this abuse method to Google around April, late April. And this should have around more than 100 days, but uh, current status is that they will decide if a fix is needed or not. And regarding the financial award not, met, not meeting the bar, uh, uh, it's not my point. And at the first, uh, in the first place, I disclose this as a methodology to abuse the cloud shield, but not of uh, vulnerability. So I. I think it's pretty fair. It's, it's not in vulnerability. Even we can by, bypass some authentication. But I think since we have root privilege, it's also possible to 
bypass that through third-party proxy apps as well. So that's all of me. Any questions? Uh, do you ha did you discover any uh, indicators of compromise in the Google Cloud audit logs that might indicate this uh, type of either compromise or attack happening? Oh. Okay, I I uh, I couldn't find anything from from the log explorer by abusing this. Yeah, I couldn't find relevant logs by abusing this this uh, cloud share. Uh, well, I was thinking presumably when you made those uh, port, uh, you made those changes. Wouldn't those logs show up? Not maybe not the access, but at least the changes you made to uh, to change the port or to set up the the redirect from from uh, the other site. I couldn't find relevant logs from, from the uh, console interfa interface. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, thank you, Duboot, for your thank talk today. Thanks for attending. Thank you.